Americans have long been fascinated by UFOs, and the public has seen the videos that our Navy pilots have taken, but do you think that we have been contacted by extraterrestrials? Well, I have talked to those Navy pilots, and they are sure that they saw something real. And of course, we've seen their video from their jets. What is it? We don't know. So now that I'm here at NASA, I've turned to our scientists and I've said, would you, looking at it from a scientific standpoint, see if you can determine so that we can have a better idea? Uh, we don't know if it's extraterrestrial. We don't know if it's an enemy. We don't know if it's an optical phenomenon. We don't think so because of the characteristics that those Navy jet pilots described as they saw it move around. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The bottom line is we want to know, and that's what we're trying to do. What do you think it is? I mean, what's your personal take on it? I don't have an idea. That's why I turned to our scientists. And Let's what have they said to you? Well, they're looking into it. Would you like me to call you when I get an answer? Please, because okay. I want to know just as much as you want to know, just as much as the public of, wants to of know. Of course. And, you know, the Pentagon, they will soon release their report on UFOs. But when, you know, when people think of mysterious things flying in the sky and aliens, they think of NASA. So what have you guys been briefed about in terms of this report? Have you been involved in any way? Uh, I was actually briefed on this a couple of years ago in my capacity on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, NASA appropriately is going to look at it through the lens of its scientists, and that's what we're doing. But do you think the agency should be more involved at this point? Well, we are, and I've started it. I've been here a month, and I've started it. And are you guys working with the Pentagon then on that report? We are not directly uh, working with them, but I can guarantee you if we find something, the Pentagon will want to know. A U.S. Navy aircraft captured images of that rotating thing back in January 2015 off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Well, look on the ASA. My gosh. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. Also in 2015, just a few weeks later, this happened. Watch as a Navy air crew struggles to lock onto a mysterious, fast-moving object off the Atlantic coast. Oh, God! <laughs> Roger, uh, there's some shooting. Shooting like this Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow, look at this guy. Former Navy fighter pilot Alex Dietrich told Anderson Cooper about spotting a strange flying object in the sky back in November 2004 off the coast of San Diego. Enter stage left, <laughs> the tic tac, uh, and that's what um, we affectionately refer to it as uh, because that's what it looked like. It was about the size of an aircraft fuselage. It was white, it was in sort of a matte finish, uh, just like a tic tac. And it behaved in a way that we were um, we were surprised, uh, unnerved. It uh, accelerated, it, or it almost didn't accelerate, right? It sort of jumped from, from spot to spot and tumbled around in a way that was unpredictable. Former Navy Commander David Fravor was on the training mission with Dietrich and remembers how the object quickly maneuvered like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. The ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is mm -hmm. something I had never seen in my life. So what was it? The government won't say or maybe doesn't know. For decades, the Pentagon's research into these close encounters has been kept under wraps, along with the images and a now defunct $22 million program designed to investigate UFOs. So what are we to believe about moments like this? Whoa, it's getting close. Whoa, splashed. splashed, splashed. Members of the U.S. Navy captured that footage of an unidentified flying object spotted off the coast of California in July 2019, just before it vanished into the ocean. 
And with so few answers, extraterrestrials have become a favorite subject for conspiracy theorists, with much of the focus on a highly classified U.S. Air Force testing facility in Nevada, known as Area 51. Bob Lazar is the conspiracy theorist and former physicist who says he worked at the secretive government research site, Area 51. He says he was hired to reverse engineer a flying saucer buried there. This, this came from somewhere else. I mean, as bizarre as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there, I saw it. Others have bought into his claims that the U.S. government buried extraterrestrial technology at Area 51. It looks like sand. It's made to look like the side of the mountain that it's in, whether it's to disguise it from satellite photographs. So until someone says for sure what's really out there. No sound, no blinking sound. lights, just <laughs> this big illuminated form. We'll be left still to wonder. Randy Kay, CNN, Miami. And joining me now is former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. While in office, uh, he secured the money for a now defunct Pentagon program investigating UFOs. He's also been one of the loudest voices calling for the government to release this information about these close encounters in the sky or whatever these things are in the sky. Uh, so, Senator, let me ask you this. This report apparently says there's no evidence that these objects were alien spacecraft, but they're not ruling it out either. Uh, were you hoping for more from this report? I know I was. Well, I, I really had a preliminary run of the, what the came up were going to come up with, and it wasn't going to be much. And it isn't much. My, my take on this is that they should continue the research on this. It shouldn't be a one and done. I believe that uh, one of the things I did that I, I'm glad I did, I made a decision because of my curiosity that I thought we should find out what, if anything, there was to these UFOs. And that's when I went to Stevens from Alaska and in a way from Hawaii, and uh, said, I, I told him what I wanted to do, I wanted to spend some money to collaborate, corroborate what they were trying to find out. And Stevens uh, said immediately, he said, good, I want to do this. He said, it was a pilot in World War II, and there was something off to my, was in the air, off to my left. I would go up, down, around, got low on fuel, came back down, landed. I asked air traffic what that was, he said, we didn't see any. So mm. with the money that we got from the taxpayers, we found that I, I thought maybe there'd be a few dozen uh, people saying they saw things like this. But we learned that there were hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, so even though uh, my staff said, stay the hell away from this, uh, I was something I was bound and determined to, to do. He said it would hurt me, my re-elections. Uh, didn't hurt me that much, I, can't, I got re-elected. So I think it's a good thing for the country, it's a good thing for the world, and the American people can accept the truth, whatever is the truth. We need to be transparent in everything we're doing in the government, let the American people know what we're doing, scientifically and otherwise. And Senator, I have to ask you, because I know the folks at home will want me to ask this question. Do you believe that these UFOs are alien spacecraft? And is the government trying to cover it up? Um, you were the Senate Majority Leader, Senator, for a long time here in Washington. What can you tell us uh, about both of those questions? Do you think they exist and I is do the not government know covering what this they up? Are. Yeah, I don't know what they are. No one does to my knowledge at this time. But I, that's why I say this task force that's going to report later this month should continue. We're not going to solve all the questions we have in a few weeks. We need to continue working on it. This is something that is interesting. It's important to the country, and it could be important to the world. And in that report, Randy K. referenced Area 51, which you actually got to visit when you were in office. What can you tell us about what you saw there, uh, you know, these questions about whether things are buried there? Uh, what did you see? Let, what let did me you tell find? you that. Here, here's my most uh, graphic memory. I go, uh, there was a family, my name is Sheehan, they had a, a ranch, uh, not a ranch, an old mine. It was kind of a place they would go on weekends and have picnics and barbecues. So one weekend they go up there and there, there's military police. Their property's barred, barred off. 
And so, uh, what's, what's this? Up? Well, the reason they did that is from that property of theirs, they could look down on Area 51. And they that was the end of their weekend trips to their, their property. So I uh, know Area 51. I've been there quite a few times. Uh, saw some really interesting things. Much of it is still classified, but I remember looking at a Soviet helicopter uh, that had been come from some place that we got. They also had a stealth helicopter they were working on at the time it was classified. So a lot of things went on at Area 51. Uh, it was just a short distance from there that we had the uh, stealth fighter bomb, fire plane. There was a people learned to fly, our, our airmen learned to fly there because the Soviet satellites would come over during the daytime. And of course, they could, they could see any, everything down there. So we did it at nighttime. So the Soviets couldn't see what we learned, what we were doing. And what they were doing is learning to fly these new airplanes. They did it all at night. Everything they did in pitch darkness. So it was a very interesting. The Area 51 is important to the security of this country. It still is, and it has been for many decades.